love with Pat's two cents. Now, we're going to continue reading, and I want you to hear this. This is Ezekiel chapter, let me move this over here, Ezekiel chapter 37, and we're starting at verse, I guess we'll start at verse seven just so that there's a little continuity even though i've already read some of it from the other lo excuse me so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone <laughs> and when i beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto these winds, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind. Check this out. Thus saith the Lord. I love this. One of my favorite scriptures. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slains, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, and you could just say the body of Christ. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land then shall you know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord you know I just want to say this that was the last verse in the chapter verse 14 this is Pat's two cents now okay Listen, you guys. There is nothing beyond hope. No man can take things beyond the point of no return. Because no matter what happens, no matter how dire or negative the future may seem to be, no matter how glim or glib or whatever the word may be, uh, no matter how dark the future may seem or how fuzzy or cloudy, let me tell you, God has you and me in the palm of his hand, in the core of his love. He has us in his heart. He will carry you just like he'll carry me. And his love goes beyond a bomb. His love goes beyond a meteorite. His love goes beyond sickness. His love goes beyond the grave. So I say this to you. Look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. You are in good hands with God. God knows how to bring the greatest beauty, the greatest glory out of a horrific situation. And what if you draw your last breath here? 
What if there's an attack and I draw my last breath? I honestly believe we won't even feel it. I believe that. I believe that God is going to bless us so much that it would almost be like a sneak escape. And I'm not talking about the second coming of Christ. I'm talking about, you know, let's say before he he comes to get his saints. If anything horrific happens, I believe God takes stings, pain, agony, fear out of death. And it becomes an experience that's beautiful because you're instantly trans transitioning into a whole new form of existence where there is no pain, no sickness, no tears, no sorrow, no loss. And all of a sudden, you're in your element. It's like dropping a fish, picking a fish up from a little uh, a, a little uh, swimming dish, a little fish tank, and dropping him into the ocean. Now he's in his element. Well, when God takes us to heaven, when God brings us into his presence, we're going to be in our element, you guys. This is not our home. That is to be absent. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I much prefer that to this any day. But I do believe from everyone I've ever seen die that there is no pain in death. That pain is the relief. It's, it, it's a, a release. It releases you into the most beautiful existence you could ask for into the presence of God, into the beauty of the heavenlies, the love, the, oh my goodness, to be in that glory. I don't think words can describe it here on heaven. So he likens it to streets of gold. He likens it to per, the, uh, uh, the pearly gates and all that. But I don't think, I just don't think there's anything to fear in death. And I'm not trying to be morbid. What I'm trying to say is, no matter how this thing pans out, we win. Do you hear me? We win. God has stacked the deck in our favor. You hear me? You lift up your heads. You be encouraged. This whole game you know how they say the fight is fixed? God has fixed this fight. As long as we fight the good fight of faith, as long as we remember that our weapons are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. If we remember that when Jesus said, peace I give to you, you hear what I'm saying? That if we remember that healing is the children's bread and the ultimate healing is to get our new bodies and to live in our new home. Jesus has prepared a place for you and me. I can hardly wait. I want to see what kind of mansion he's got for me. And I don't believe that they are mansions in the sense that we think of them. I think that it, it's, it, you know, when he says he places you in your own land, I believe that the whole surrounding is your, the, the most beautiful thing you could think of. If you like water or you love flowers or whatever, I really believe that God will do something just that beautiful to enable us to explore a beauty that's indescribable. So, like I said, when you heard him talk about bones, you know, things shaking in the bones that were all separated and fragmented and they came together bone to his bone. There's a joining that God does. There's a solidifying, uh, a, a re 
furnishing, a uniting, even of God's people, even of the body of Christ that may have been scattered all over this world. Even we will come together in Christ. And I, I just believe that there's so much more to that scripture than we see right now. I believe there's so much more encouragement, more meaning to it. And if we could see that no matter how much things are shaken up, God is doing a good thing. No matter how bad the things are that man is doing. God is faithful to his own. And the cards are stacked in our favor, you guys. You can, you can take that to the bank. God is not a man that he should lie. You're not alone in this. The best one you could have on your side. You can't ask for anything better. There is nothing better. So you be encouraged here. And don't you sit there and lose heart. Don't you sit there and be hopeless. I'll jump through this screen and set you straight. All right. Don't get on my bad side. God bless you. Chinny chin up. Woo woo. Chinny chin up. Be encouraged. God is for you, not against you.